Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today we'll be making oven baked, Greek inspired pork back ribs. This is a simple recipe with only two steps. The ribs are slow cooked in the oven for three hours and they come out fall off the bone and super tender. This recipe is both keto and carnivore friendly and is high in protein and fat. This recipe only requires three ingredients. The first one is Redmond's Real Salt. It's an unrefined mineral salt made in Utah and we've seen a bunch of other YouTubers use it and we definitely believe the hype, it tastes really good. And then the next two are just the Greek inspired ingredients. The first one's garlic, a little bit lazy today so we decided to buy a container of chopped garlic. And then the final ingredient that gives it the Greek flavor is the oregano. We used to cook our ribs with a lot more barbecue sauce but we've kind of switched our taste lately. We've shown you in our other video, link up here, that there are a number of different sugar-free barbecue options available. But for this recipe, we definitely decided to simplify it down and keep the flavors more neutral. Feel free to adjust to your taste and to your tolerance. This recipe is more of a cooking process as opposed to a traditional recipe. I feel that if you follow this recipe and how we prepare the ribs, you can cook them with any sort of seasonings and they'll come up tender and juicy every time. We think ribs are a great option on a carnivore or keto diet because it gives you the variety of trying different meats other than just beef. And it also is a relatively inexpensive cut of meat compared to beef, but it just takes a little bit of time and preparation to make it taste delicious. We like to cycle different types of meat into our diet in order to get variety and keep things interesting. Okay, so let's get started. The first step is to preheat your oven to 280 degrees. When prepping your ribs, this is optional, but you can decide to remove the membrane off the back of the ribs this piece of silver skin that goes along the back. So the easiest way to do this is to take a pair of scissors right here, cut a little slit into the membrane. Well, not all the way through, but just enough so you can grab a little piece of it in the corner. You take a paper towel, once you find your piece, so now that we got a good handful of it, grab it and pull it right off. That's satisfying. So we're just gonna use a little bit of apple cider vinegar as binder. Just pour just a splash on each side. Rub it in. It, this basically just allows the seasonings to stick. You can also use lemon juice. It gives a little bit of acidity as well to the meat. I think lemon juice would be a better choice, but we ran out of lemons today. So we're gonna take our salt here. I'd add about half a teaspoon to a teaspoon, depending on the size of your ribs. We have one rack here. I don't know what it is about this Redmond's Real Salt, but it's like there's MSG in it or something. It tastes so good. The next is oregano. i give you the Greek flavor. And it kind of cuts through that pork aroma, if you've ever noticed that before in ribs. Typically you can cover it up with like barbecue sauce or those sort of flavors, but if you order Greek ribs from the restaurant, you'll notice the major taste is the oregano. We added about a teaspoon total. These herbs are optional. If you're on a strict carnivore diet, I would stick with just the salt, but these kind of give it a nice flavor. The last ingredient is this crushed garlic. Feel free to cut garlic yourself, but this is a little bit easier for us when we're in a hurry. This is purely to taste. You might just want a little or a lot. We're probably using about a tablespoon for the whole tobacco ribs. The garlic gives it that Greek flavor as well. Just massage the garlic in with your hands or with a spatula. Now we'll flip it over and do the back side. Now we'll let this sit and marinate for a bit while we prep our tray for the oven. You can let this marinate for as long as you want, even overnight. So we'll need to wrap these ribs up tightly for the three hour cooking process. And we'll need two different types. First is aluminum foil, and the second is parchment. So the first thing we'll do is lay down one big layer, about twice the length of your baking sheet. We'll lay this down, shiny side up, and then we will take a piece of parchment paper, roughly the same size. I think scissors will help a little bit. Okay, so we've laid down our two layers of paper. First, we have the aluminum foil on the bottom and the parchment on top. Parchment paper will stop the ribs from sticking to the foil and make it easier to take out of the tray later. So we're gonna take our meat and lay it meat side down, bones facing up. You can see the back of the ribs. We'll just kind of Place a direct center on the tray. So the first thing we'll do is tightly wrap the ribs in the paper. This will also help trap all the steam that's coming off the ribs. Now the ribs are direct center. We'll fold over the tin foil. Fold over both of the sides. Kind of punch them up. Basically trying to create an airtight seal.
are, in my opinion, the easiest way to cook ribs with very little cleanup. They're basically foolproof. And we curl up the other side. There we have a nice tight rib package. One more piece here. Lay it down flat on the tray, just in case anything leaks out. Makes it even easier to clean up later. And I'll take one last piece and wrap it around the top side of the ribs, just as a final seal. So now I'm gonna put my ribs in my 280 degree preheated oven for the next three hours. Okay, so the ribs have been in the oven for three hours and let's see how they turned out. The easiest way to do this is with scissors, kind of like unwrapping a present. Watch out for steam. Basically cooked, slow cooked in its own fat. That's why kind of we leave it meat side down so that the fat meat doesn't dry out. Okay, so we're gonna flip these over. Be very careful since they may basically just fall apart. You kind of want to grab the whole rack with tongs. Okay, let's try again. <laughs> so this already looks and smells amazing, but an optional step is to turn your broiler onto high and put the ribs back under for five minutes until they get nice and brown. Just make sure you wash them so they don't burn. So we'll put these in the top rack of the broiler for five minutes. So the ribs are in the broiler for only about three minutes. Make sure to wash them carefully because they did start to slightly burn, but as you can see, everything's turned nice and brown. I'm ready to dive in. So cut off maybe a third of the slab here. Oh, look. Bone comes right out. <laughs> I'll just chop right there. As I said, be careful, this will all fall apart. Okay, I've waited three hours. Finally, ready for a taste test. It's so tender. You don't really need a knife or a fork or anything, you just pull it apart, but you can see here, it comes right away. Actually, I think you can just pull all the bones <laughs> right out of the meat. This would be, go be good in one of those McDonald's rib sandwiches. The edges are all crispy from the broil. Can't wait to try this. Mmm. So good. Mmm. One more bite first. Mmm. Yeah, turned out perfect. Super tender. As you can see, it comes right off the bone. The Greek flavors with the oregano and the garlic really make it really fragrant. Yeah, one of my favorite recipes. Super simple, no heavy sauces or anything, just basically meat and heat and a little bit of seasonings. We've done this before with just salt, it turns out great as well. We also like to mix uh, some tzatziki together, homemade tzatziki. Uh, the recipe will link down below, but that, that on there is really good as well. Or you can just use a little bit of sour cream or Greek yogurt or even feta cheese. Kind of mix, mixes well with this, these ingredients. But yeah, this by itself is just so good. Oops. Mm. I'll get my wife in here next to give it a try. Okay, let's see what you think. I've been selling this for three <laughs> hours. Oh, that really just came right off. Yeah. Nori <laughs> couldn't even clean a bowl like that, right, Nori? <laughs> yeah, I really like the flavor that the oregano gives mm -hmm. because oregano really complements pork. <laughs> I'm just about to. Yeah, no chewing, right? I think because you're slow cooking it in that, that, that tight package for so long, it definitely breaks it all down. Wow, it's just so tender. Like the, the little top off with the broil, just kind of adds that extra, what do you call it, like smokiness? Yeah, kind of makes it yeah. makes it kind of like it's grilled, but yeah, yeah. this is something we don't have to go outside and do the grill to do. You could do it any weather, so. Good? So good. Good amount of salt. Do you notice that red mint salt tastes better? Or? It has an umami flavor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Compared that's what. regular salt. Yeah. We were into a Himalayan salt for a while because that was the that was the whole trend, right? But yeah. This is technically like pink salt too. 
It's just underground salt. It's very tasty. Yeah. If you're debating between how to make your ribs, there are other options, but I would say this one for carnivores is really good. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's just like those Greek ribs you get at the Greek restaurants, the wrap yeah. ribs. Yeah, yeah. Exactly same that. flavorings. We actually had those, we had those ribs last week. Yeah, when we this were- This is better. Yeah. <laughs> this is better. Better than restaurant food. Good job, babe. Thank you. If you liked our video today, please subscribe, leave us a thumbs up, and let us know in the comments below what are your favorite ways to make pork ribs. Until next time.